In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to connect your Minecraft server to your Discord server. So game messages like chat and achievements will show up in a Discord channel. Discord users can even send messages back so they can talk to online players. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. There are four steps here. The first is to set up JDA, which is how we're gonna to talk to Discord from Minecraft. The second is setting up the Minecraft event listeners. The third is setting up the Discord chat listener. And the fourth is creating our bot. Let's go ahead and start setting up JDA right now. To start using JDA, you need to add it to your project using Maven. I'm gonna link my palm to XML Maven file in the description. You can go ahead and copy the build steps, repositories, and dependencies here, and then you'll be all set to start writing your code. We're gonna add two fields to our main class here. The first is a JDA object called JDA. This is our bot reference. The second one is a text channel, and we're gonna call this chat channel. This is the channel on Discord where messages are gonna be sent. Then inside of Autonable, we're gonna save the default configuration file. I'll link this in the description as well. You'll need it a little bit later. Next, we need to grab the bot token from the config file. And this is super easy. You just have to grab the configuration file and find the string named bot-token. Now that we have that, we can set JDA equal to JDA builder dot create default, passing in our bot token. We're then gonna say dot build and then dot a wait ready. So what this does is it adds our bot token to JDA. Then it says build bot and go ahead and set this thing up with discord. And finally, we're going to call a wait ready to stop any execution of code until our bot is ready to go and it is loaded with discord. There are some exceptions here, the interrupted exception, the login exception. You can just go ahead and try catch these and everything will work out. After that, we need to check if JDA is null because if it is, we want to disable our plugin. This means that discord has not connected to JDA and we can't use any features. We'll just talk to the plugin manager and tell it to disable our plugin and then we will return so that no more of our code gets run. Next, let's load the channel that chat will take place in. This is another config variable called chat channel ID. And if the chat channel ID is not null, we're gonna go ahead and tell JDA to load that so we can reference it a little bit later. Now, inside of on disable, we're actually going to turn off our bot. To do this, we're gonna check if JDA is not null. And if it's not null, we're just gonna call JDA.shutdown now. This makes sure that when the server stopped, our bot is stopped as well and there's no glitches there. There's one other thing we have to do in this section before moving on, and that's setting up our advancement name map. We need this so we can show the correct name of the advancement in Discord. At the top of our class, we're going to create a private final map. This is going to be a map of two strings here. We'll name this advancement to display map and then set that equal to a new hash map. This is where we store the key of an advancement associated with the name of that same advancement. If you've gone and grabbed the config file I provided in the description, you can see all of the advancements here that I have painstakingly added to the file. These are the keys for the advancement and their associated display name. Now that we've created the map, we need to go to our config file and load all of that data. We'll load the advancement map configuration section. And if it's not null, we're gonna loop over every top level key in the configuration section here. In our case, the key here is just the identifier of each advancement. And the value is just the display name of that same advancement. And finally, we can add the key and the value of our advancement app into the advancement to display map variable we just created a moment ago. And with that, we are done setting up JDA. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can get more videos like this one right in your subscription feed. All right, so with JDA good to go, let's set up our Minecraft event listeners. First, we'll create the method we're gonna use later to send messages to Discord. We'll name it send message. The first parameter is a player. The second is going to be the content of the message. The third parameter will be a boolean named content and author line. And the fourth is going to be a color from Java to AWT, and we'll just name it color. Inside of the method, we're gonna check if the chat channel is null. If it is, we're just gonna return. Then we can start building our message using the embed builder from JDA. We'll create a new embed builder object named builder. Then we're gonna set the author of the embed by using the set author method. We're gonna check if content and author line is true. If that's the case, we're going to put the content in. Otherwise, we're going to put the player's display name in. Then we'll pass in null for the URL. Then we're gonna use this thing called craftatar to show the player's skin or their head in the Discord message. And I'll have this website as well as the URL here in the description as well. Next, if the content is not in the author line, then we're gonna set the description of the builder to the content. And now we can finally send our message. So we're gonna call chat channel .send message. We'll pass in our builder and then call the build method on builder. And finally, after we call send message, we're going to call Q to let Discord know that we want to send this message whenever it is next available to do so. Now let's go ahead and create our event listener class. Inside of the main class, we're gonna create another class 
podcast named Spigot Listener that implements the Bucket Listener protocol. If you have a bit of a larger project, I highly recommend you move this to a separate file. But in my case, this plugin only does the Discord and Minecraft connection, so I have no need to move this outside of the main class because our plugin is relatively short. We've got five different things we want to listen for. We have player chat, join and quit, death, as well as advancement. Let's go ahead and write each one. I've created a method for handling chat events. So inside of this, we're going to call send message, passing in the player who's chatted, as well as the message that they've sent. We're going to set content to authorline to false, which means that our content will appear below the player's name instead of in line with it. And then our color will just be color.gray. I've written a join player handler here. And inside of that, we're going to call send message, again, passing in that player from the player joined event. And then we're going to say they've joined the server as our message. We'll set content in author line to true because we want all of our text to be in one line. And then this color probably should be green. I think it's an appropriate color for joining the game. We'll copy this entire event handler and then just rename it to on quit. And then I've just changed the message here. We can also change the color to red or whatever other color you'd like. There's only two event handlers left to go, the death and then the advancement events. I've got our death handler right here. I'm grabbing a reference to our player. And then I'm gonna paste in this code that just sets up a death message. If the events death message is null, it's just gonna say that the player died. Otherwise, it'll use that death message that already exists. And then we can just call send method like we've been doing with our player, the message, as well as true for the content and the author line to make sure everything is in that one line, as well as the color red for the color of our message. And then our final event handler here is the player advancement done event handler. First, we're gonna create a variable called advancement key. It's gonna be a string. And then we're just gonna set that equal to event.getAdvancement.getKey.getKey. And this is going to be our advancement identifier. And these are all listed in the config file that again, I provided in the video description. And we can just grab the name of the advancement by querying our hash map from earlier. And then if display is null, we're just going to return because it means we don't have a display name for this identifier. And then our final call to send message, we're just gonna pass in the player a little custom message saying that they've completed this advancement. We're gonna say that all of this should be displayed in one line and the color of the little sidebar will be cyan. With our Minecraft event handler done, let's go ahead and set up our Discord chat handler so we can send those messages to players in game. We'll get started by creating another inner class called Discord handler. And this class will extend the listener adapter protocol provided to us by JDA. We can then implement the on message received method. Inside of this, we need to make sure that the message that we're receiving is from the chat channel. You can see we've written that out there. Then we're gonna grab the Discord member that sent this message. If that member is null or if their user is a bot account, we do not want to handle any message here. If all those checks pass, we can grab the message that was sent. We'll do this by getting the events message and then calling get content display. This is how it shows up for Discord users. And then all you have to do is just broadcast this message out to your entire server and then you're good to go. Now that our Discord listener is done, let's go ahead and register both it and the spigot event listener. We can register the Discord one by calling jda.addEventListener and then creating a new instance of Discord listener here. And then of course we can register our spigot events just like we always do by getting the plugin manager, calling register events, passing in the listener and an instance of our main class. And that is the Discord event listener. Let's go ahead and do our final step before our plugin is ready to go and set up our bot on Discord's website. Head over to discord.com slash developers. I'll have another link in the description for that. Then you can click the new application button to create your bot. I'm gonna use a bot I've already created. On the sidebar, go ahead and click on the bot section. And then when it asks you, go ahead and say, create new bot. This page also has the token for your bot, which you'll copy and paste into your config file for your plugin. Then the last thing to do is actually add this bot to your server. Head over to the OAuth section and then click on the bot check mark. And then you can give your bot different permissions based on what you want it to do. In our case, we only ever send messages, so we'll only click on that one checkbox. And then you can just click on the copy button above the bot permissions section, and then you'll paste this link into your browser. It'll give you a pop-up to add this bot to your server. And this is the page where you add your bot to your Discord server. So go ahead and select the server you'd like, and then hit OK. After this, you'll see all the permissions your bot wants, which should just say the send message if you're following along with what I've done. And then you can just press authorized, and then your bot is on your server. Now that you have your bot on your server, the last thing to do is get the ID of the chat channel you want to have the bot talk in. Turn on developer's discord mode, which can be found in your account settings. And then right click your channel, scroll down to copy ID, and then click on that. And now you've got your ID copied to your clipboard. And then you could put your plugin on the server, load it once, and then your config file is ready to go. You can paste in your bot token and your chat ID, and then reload your server one more time, and your bot is ready to run on your server, sending messages back and forth. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, make sure everything works correctly. 
And as you can see, as I join in, I get that message there. If I send a chat message, that also appears in Discord. I can die and then that message is also in Discord. I can give myself an advancement and that shows up in Discord. Then in Discord, I can actually send a message. So I'll just write hello. You can see that appears in game. And then last but not least, I can quit the server and that also shows in Discord. And that's your Discord bot 100% working. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free, you can always change your mind later, and you'll get more videos like this one if you turn on notifications. In fact, I actually have another Discord bot video you can go ahead and watch right over here.